Right, and we are back with set number one, trial number one, Cynic versus Misery, and we see the Oni on the Mount Ormond Resort shredding the slopes and these survivors alike as they have found not one but two here and are going to be going for the Nicholas Cage and getting a little bit of mind game here and a clean hit there on Ducky. And it looks like they are going to continue, but taking their time here as they want every blood orb that this survivor drops. And looks like they're going to be going for an early power here. Trying to get the pallet drop, though, and there it is. We do see Shattered Hull there, as well as the cane. So this Oni definitely going to be getting their power here shortly, but just a few blood orbs short. And looks like there is a survivor up here in main as Corrupted Avenger in full effect. There's the Jake going up to the second floor, but Oni, not wanting to go for them, will instead I find, I believe, the Ada here going to the back corner and the Corrupted Gen. So a really well played here by the Oni as they get a very early down on Abby. Ultra definitely in their element here with the Oni on Mount Ormond Resort. We do see a bit of agitation as they do look around for a hook to put the survivor on and that there will be a scourge hook pain residence or aggressing the most progressed gen by 25 percent so really well played here by the killer to say the least as we do see scratch marks going up back towards the top floor of main building but that being said no sign of any other survivors so far so far, as far as perks are concerned, we have ourselves an Agitation, as well as Corrupt Intervention, and finally a Scourge Hook Pain Resonance. Last perk, a little bit of an unknown here, so we'll have to wait and see as the Oni gets a good hit here on the Jake Jukebox as they will make their way away from the hook. However, Oni not content with just getting one hook on the survivor. They want to get second stage and potentially a early tunnel out here. That being said, sounds like a little bit of progress on this gen here. Not too much though, as that will be a 2.5% kick plus 0.3% per thereafter. As we do see a, maybe a fast vault there coming out of that locker room, trying to grab the Oni's attention as they will get hit by a blast mine. Ace certainly holding a sprint burst, I'm fairly certain, as they were not all too fearful of the Oni there in the main building. That being said, only about 30 seconds left on the clock before the Survivor Beast is sent back to the campfire via the Entity. And so far, no sign of any survivors. Oni just holding this choke point hoping to see someone pass on by, but so far, no sign of anyone daring to cross the Oni's path. We'll have to wait and see what uh, the survivor game plan is. I mean, if we see two, three gens popping off in exchange for a survivor, it makes a ton of sense. However, if we don't, uh, that's gonna be a huge boon for the Oni here, as we do in fact see that survivor sent back to the campfire via the entity. Another kick here on this gen to get it regressing, and Oni with power in hand is gonna be doing some home remodeling. One gen completed for that hook, and looks like maybe getting close to a second, but not close enough, as we do see a survivor there in the mini shack trying to do a little bit of mind gaming here. That there is the Jake who will get a bit of distance, but not enough to evade the Oni as they will catch up rather quickly with their demon dash and get the down to boot. So really well played there by the Oni to say the least, as this tier will be the second hook. And I imagine another Scourge Hook Pain Residence as well. Do you want to note that Oni just a little bit below 50% of their power here. So they will need to make up for that. However, a huge blood bank here on the side of Mini Shack we did not see earlier. And that is their power back in hand. The survivors definitely on their back foot now as no matter what they do, they are going to be in a scenario where they can potentially go down for a unhook. A still trying to get some progress here on main with the Oni knowing that and knowing where Nick Cage is as well, who is going to be interesting. We see the pallet drop. Nick Cage, Ducky going down. I imagine we're going to see the ace going for the unhook in just a moment, but no scratch mark suggesting that. 
Oh, this is interesting. Where could the ace be? Oni checking every nook and cranny and finding an ace on top of main. There's a pallet coming up, but not in the nick of time. There's the locker grab, two boots. And that is going to be what looks to be a 4K here for the Oni and Cynic here in try number one, set number one. A very quick result to say the least. I don't imagine Nick Cage has gone very far. And yeah, there they are just sitting underneath the hook against the Oni. I do not believe there is any deliverance either. So there's gonna be a quick and clean 4K at two gens completed. So going to be a very difficult uh, uphill battle here for Misery's Killer in trial number two, set number one. Starting to look more and more like set one will go in Cynic's favor. That being said, best not to make any predictions until the entity sings the sound of three survivors dying on hook at the same time. That being said, an exciting trial one. Going to be interesting to see what Misery brings in response. I believe they're going to be bringing a Mastermind, another hyper-lethal killer. Obviously, not as lethal as Oni during their Demon Dash, but still, if used correctly, they can definitely get a early 4K. But they're going to need to get a 4K at two gens to tie and one gen or less in order to secure victory. That being said, a survivor giving the Oni a gift on their way out with a blast mine there. And that there will ring in the end of trial number one here with Cynic getting the 4K at two gems completed. All right, and we are back for trial number two, set number one, Misery killing against Cynic survivor team. And they are going to need to get a 4K at two gens to tie and one gen completed or less in order to secure victory. It's quite the uphill battle, but not outside the realm of possibility. That being said, Mastermind unable to find a survivor early on here. We'll have to wait and see if their luck changes. And while they are looking around, we are going to see the lab photo from the Mastermind come into play as they're able to destroy pallets and break the walls while colliding into them using their power. And looks like they have found a detective tap here in the corner of this map. And they're gonna go for a bound. The question is, will it connect? Looks like it will not instead going to insta-break the pallet, getting a little bit of distance on the tap. And looks like they are going to W key through the window. And looks like they will try and get some distance, but not with much success as they are going to make some distance towards the next pallet. Make it there in time, though it is a bit dangerous as we do see that free drop there. Mastermind thinking about going for the bound and potentially catching them at the window if they did go for the vault, but that's not gonna be the case. Looks like it will be this time though, and no bound. We're really surprised there to say the least. As far as perks are concerned, we have only seen one, that which being a corrupt intervention. Slowing things down just a little bit. Other than that, though, no sign of any chase perks, at least none that we have seen. A fake there for the tap and the down for the mastermind. So not a bad down as far as time is concerned that there will be the first hook revealing Scourge Hook Pain Residence, regressing the most progressed gen by 25%. First gen popping off for these survivors though, and looks like the mastermind gonna be hanging back a little bit, just checking out these gens. Do you want to point out, I do not believe that was what, 15 seconds of time between when the hook occurred and that gen completed. So I imagine we will see a second gen popping off here in just about 15, maybe 20 seconds from now. We'll have to wait and see though, and if that is the case, that will be the tie condition here for the survivors. But if the Mastermind is somehow able to secure the 4K here and now, I was gonna say that would be the win condition, but that is the tie condition here and now. That does mean that the Mastermind can't really just hang around at this hook, right? They need to ensure that the survivors do not complete a single gen. Otherwise, the win will go to Cynic here in set number one. 
Sure enough, there is the progression to second stage. Tap one hook away from being sent back to campfire via the entity. And Mastermind going to disengage now. But looks like they're just going to take their time here, reducing resources across the map. Unfortunately, though, that does mean that these survivors have all the time in the world in order to complete another gen. I imagine they'll be on it before the time it takes for this survivor to progress to death and sent back to the campfire. We do see a survivor coming in for the unhook. Mastermind going to be holding their power. And it looks like we have two of them. One survivor being thrown out, but not taking a health state. The other one coming in, it would result in a one-for-one -one trade. Mastermind just trying to throw them around in order to secure the kill and will successfully do so. A little interesting thing, though hook grabs have been taken away, the Mastermind kind of has a pseudo hook grab as they're able to throw a survivor away from the hook, as we did see there, so... Smart play there, securing the kill on Wispy. And this here will be the second hook here for the Mastermind. Overall, really well played. I imagine that we're going to see that third gen pop off. And sure enough, that there will be the win for Cynic here in set number one. Do not worry, though. We have at least one more set to go. As we'll be able to see whether or not Misery will be able to return the favor here that being said looks like they're going to go for the tunnel out on the renato here will successfully get them down we'll have to wait and see what comes next as we do see a blast mine hard to see when you're blind but uh, Survivor should be nearby for that pal stun. Mastermind thinking it too. And sure enough, there's the Jake waiting in the wings for the pal stun and save. And uh, Jake doing their best to uh, utilize that picnic table there to gain a little bit of distance. And looks like they will successfully evade the pallet stun and get their second hook here. Or rather, get their third, uh, get their fifth hook in total. Second hook on Renato. There we go. Those are words that I was looking for. It's been a long day already, folks. That being said, Mastermind going to be looking around once again. No Scourge Hook Pain Residence on that gen. And we do see what looks to be the Jake coming in for the unhook. We'll have enough time in order to get it. Mastermind trying to go for the BT hit. Will successfully get it on the Renato. And they will be going over to Shaq. Gen already completed here. Shack Pallet still up, but not for long as Lab Photo going to be breaking that pallet. And looks like Mastermind with the second um, uh, stack in hand will go for the grab, but Renato just narrowly dodging. Really well played. However, they are now hindered due to being fully infected here, though with a life will get some distance and a pallet stun to boot as fourth gen going to be completed here for these survivors. One gen away before the X gates are powered. But Renato will not be able to escape through them today as they are going to be picked up and put Seven on a hook for the like third and final time, leaving the Nia and Jake to potentially complete this last generator. Honestly, really well played by both sides. But last gen being completed, and that will be the Exegates powered, looking like a one-man escape here for the survivors as they have split pressure. We saw Nia go towards the other side of the map. Jake gonna be heading there now too, though. Taking a bit of a detour up onto the second floor of Main, it looks like. Maybe a bounce landing in play? No, instead dropping the pallet. They're gonna drop down here through the window. Mastermind will too. And it looks like a decent amount of distance gained there by the Jake, but ooh, they might be going for a hatch play. X gates open. Jake going for the hatch. There's the escape by the Nia. Mastermind can't close it yet. Are they on top? And they are. Mastermind able to close it. Pinpoint precision there by the Mastermind as they were able to bound right on top of the hatch. Honestly, really well played by the survivors as well in getting that time. It's just that the Mastermind saw what was happening, was able to know exactly where the hatch was spawned in order to block the survivor from escaping. So, really well played by both teams, and congratulations to Cynic Wakame victorious here in trial number, or sorry, set number one 
of this match. We are going to be flipping sides now, or rather, we're going to be flipping over to set two. Same team, Misery, killing as the spirit against Cynic Survivor Team, this time on the Cole Tower. All right, and we are back, and uh, we see the spirit here lighting a lit totem right in front of us. In fact, there are two on this map. This is, this is gonna throw off all the statistics, folks, as Misery gonna be uh, bringing a very interesting build here. Of course, we do have the good old corrupt intervention slowing things down for the survivors as the entity blockers will be blocking three different generators. That being said, we also see that gen regressing without the need of assistance from the killer as that, in fact, is a hex ruin coming into play. I mean, said Spirit gonna be going for a hit here. Looked like we saw Survivor vaulting that window, but in fact did not. That is instead two Survivors here, Jake and the Nia. Though Jake with a sprint first gonna be getting a lot of distance and able to make their way back over towards main. However, Nia gonna be just able to maneuver around this tile here. Spirit with the fake out and trying to fake a second time, a third time. And this time going to be committing to it though. There's the grass going away from the pallet and there's the hit. So good clean hit there as far as perks concerned. No other perks revealed, just ruin and of course corrupt intervention. And looks like they will be going and that will be a totem cleanse. And I'll let you in on a secret that there is not ruin that was cleansed though we also see a bit of forced hesitation in play so when a survivor is put in dying state by any means all of the survivors win 16 years on suffer from a negative 20 percent hindered stat for 10 seconds so interesting to see that as well as far as what totem was cleansed that was not ruin as that was in fact a hex no one escapes death so really surprising to see that to say the least we'll have to see uh if that will really impact the spirit all too much or if ruin is really the perk of choice that they are happy to be keeping either ways an interesting build i i don't think we've ever seen a build like this before on spirit we'll put it that way as far as even two hex uh perks it's very rare to see that in cotf that being said though the hook is right next to their ruin so they can camp this out with impunity and just pretty much just sit here, camp the hook, camp the totem, ensure that ruin's still in play. Mind you, it doesn't really matter as survivors are sitting on the gens, but Jake gonna be coming in and going for the unhook that has at least one survivor off of gens as we speak. They can't really get the hook grabs. They're trying to body block here. Jake will one for one trade before the second stage on the Neo, but looks like the spirit will want to go for the tunnel out and is going to pursue Nia nonetheless. No palace done to the spirit swung through that. That would have been the BT hit, but BT will definitely have a uh, run out now. And there's the palace done. There's the revolt. Oh, actually, I even think that was a revolt. I think that was a 50-50 where they threw the palace on the opposite side. However, a decisive strike coming in. That will give the Nia a little bit of distance. The question is how much as we see the Jake get back up off the ground. And two sets of scratch marks, one for the Nia, one for another, and the Spirit just unable to get the hit. So, really interesting to say the least as far as these chases have been going. But three gens completed for only one hook for the Spirit. As far as the slowdown or gen regression is concerned, Ruin the only thing left as the killer now left with just Ruin and forced hesitation. Uh, correction, just for hesitation as Ruin has now been cleansed or what it's worth. Jacob, the drop down, no bounce landing, will get down. However, there is another survivor nearby for the Palestine. There's the Ada ready in the wings to get the down. Let's see if she has a bounce landing. No balance and will take the hit. Honestly, Force Hesitation actually may have come into play there as that would have hindered Ada by 20%. However, looks like the Ada will get away as we do see Ace trying to make their way back over towards the main building, potentially threatening that pallet stun. 
but no, an unbreakable from the Jake out of nowhere, taking the stun and getting some distance to boot. A very cheeky play to say the least, however they will go back down over this pallet, so no more second chances for this Jake. Spirit looking around though, just in case there's someone with flashlight though. And uh, looks like they will end up on a hook here as Spirit trying to drag them closer towards the main building. And looks like they will be going for the phase walk over towards the hill. Has a little bit of progress, not much to speak of though. Scratch marks run away that there is the Ada as fourth gen now completed for the survivors. One gen away before the exit gates have been powered and they will be able to attempt an escape. The question is, will the spirit be able to get some more points here? I think the best case scenario for here on out is going for fresh hooks and not for tunnel outs. They can't really build up a lot of pressure here. They're not gonna have a lot of time, especially with the gen spread as it stands right now. Spirit just does not have that mobility in order to deal with the verticality of the main building, being that the survivors are just in a really strong position. That being said, Jake, only about 10 seconds away before being pushed to second stage and being sent back to the campfire via the entity one hook thereafter. And we don't see any survivors hanging around. We see crows go off here by this gen. Jake with the deliverance, the 59 second deliverance. That is backbreaking for this spirit. So they will end up buying the ace. Honestly, going for the pickup here is probably the best thing that they could do in the instance of a adrenaline, but no adrenaline, no Noah though. There's the force hesitation being activated very briefly. But for what it's worth, looks like we're gonna see a mind game. No benefit from it though. Instead, finding the Ada not able to get the hit either. That fast vault there just coming into play. Reminder for you survivors mains out there, you will not see that for long as that will get reverted once the new alien chapter does go live. That being said, a clean down there and a pickup on the ace. Ada here will have to body block for them lest they do get redown. There's the firecracker from the ace and the redown to boot. Honestly, I think going back for the pickup on the Neo would be the play here. We'll have to wait and see. There's definitely a survivor nearby. The question is where? They could even be in the locker just sitting, waiting, potentially with a head on to boot. Spirit having to make a choice here of who to go for. They're checking the locker, curious of where this Ada might be. They see the Jake in the distance. The saver play might be the pickup on the ace. There's wasting time now. Scratch marks though from the Ada. Looks like they're here. They will get the fall at the window. Once again, the fast vault just coming in clutch. Spirit going for the swing here, thinking that a survivor might be there for the pickup as well. Ada still just forcing these, uh, for forcing the spirit to not make a choice. Ace still on the ground. And I will note that I believe their bleed out timer is less than the current time it would take for EGC to tick down. Spirit going to go for the fake out here. Looking around to see if they can find the ace. No sign of the Ada. She is waiting very patiently. Trying to see if maybe they might be able to find the ace's location. Spirit going to go for the phase walk. Seeing if they can get the Jake. There's the... Grass moving, but the sprint first coming in. Nia off the ground now. And the ace is two. Three survivors injured, but back up and ready to go. EGC with about two minutes on the clock. Nia though in a bit of a precarious position here. The spear trying to at least secure the 1k. But Nia just going to be threatening the drop off the hill. About a minute actually less than until egc ends we do see an escape one two and three and looks like the neo will be the sacrificial lamb here as they will be put on the hook for the final time of this trial honestly really really well played body survivors they played to a t to say the least 
And uh, with that being said, we are going to be getting set up for the next trial here. What could be our final trial of this match as we are going to be seeing Cynic killing as the spirit against Misery's survivor team. Well, you know, the wind conditions in just a little bit. But before... All right, and we are back for what could be the final trial of this match as we are going to be seeing Cynic kill against Misery's survivor team as Spirit once again on the Cold Tower. And they have found not one, but two survivors very early here as we see a vault out of me, maybe trying to drag attention away from the ace who we saw here and a very clean hit there at the pallet. Though getting the stun will reduce resources on the map. And do want to point out as far as wind conditions are concerned, one hook on each survivor will result in victory here for Cynic Spirit. Or there's a lot of different win conditions. You could get a 1k5 hook. You could get two hooks, a first and second stage on two different survivors. There, there's a lot for the spirit to work with, and it's going to be very difficult for these survivors to meet the win condition. That being said, Ace going down underneath the pallet with a survivor nearby. We do see what looks to be a jolt there, regressing that gen by 8%. A little bit surprising to say the least. But uh, that being said, looks like this survivor is just going to be hanging around this pallet. We do hear footsteps, that's the Kate, and the stun to boot. So, really well played there by the survivors, keeping the ace upright and off the hook. And Kate with the body block too, I wasn't sure they were able to make it work, but they were able to. Ace though, trying to slowly walk there, maybe recover their exhaustion perk a little bit. As they see Spirit at the other side of the pallet. Trying to sense where the ace is going. Going to comp corner, it looks like, to give their survivor team a little bit more time and potentially stop them from regressing gens with Jolt in hand. Very interesting to see Jolt, to say the least. That being said, the first gen popping off here for the survivor team. First hook on the ace. Like I said, they could just go for fresh hooks on each. That is a valid option. A 1k5 hook is another. So a lot going for uh, this killer, to say the least. And we'll have to wait and see as we do see scratch marks going up the hill towards the unhook. And that looks like a bounce line and getting the survivor a whole lot of distance. And looks like second gen popping off a life from the ace, getting a little bit of distance here. Pallet dropping, and looks like we are going to see the Toma attempt. Nancy sticking nearby, though, not on Jens. Potentially for a down underneath a pallet or maybe a body block if the ace needs it. That being said, ace goes down at the pallet. Spirit knows Nancy is nearby, though. Hmm. Nancy's nowhere to be seen. Hard to say for certain where they might be. Spirit, though, going to go for the pickup. They hear them behind, but they still get the palace stun and the blind to add insult to injury. These survivors being very bold and brazen, utilizing their resources as much as possible. Nancy, though, taking the injured this time around. They're going to have to send another survivor in if they are going to do anything. Ace, though, with the double back at the hill. Spirit with the phase walk. They might go for the Nancy here as third gen popping off. They will get the Nancy down. That is huge. If they hook here, they will only need two more fresh hooks in order to secure victory. But they're going to go for the ace instead. This here will be the down on ace. With both Nancy and ace down now. Here's the thing. They get the hook on Ace. That will be two stages. First hook plus a progression. Or two first hook plus the second hook. If they find Nancy now and camp her to death, that will secure victory here for Cynic. As the fourth gen's popping off, honestly, they might need to do something, do something quick. They need to find the Nancy. They need to get her down. They need to get her on a hook and camp her out until death. Because if they don't, I think that will secure victory here. For misery, or at the very least, the tie condition. 
That being said, the Revolt into Spirit not going to be helping Misery's uh, chances here as they will end up getting hooked. As far as perks are concerned, the only three that we know about right now is Sloppy Butcher, Jolt, and Corruptor Invention. Last perk, a little bit of an unknown. That being said, things are rather close here between Cynic and Misery. No survivor nearby on the gen. Spirit just looking around and doing a little bit of a fake with their phase. As far as where these survivors might be, they could be on the back gens here. And sounds like a little bit of progress, but not all too much. That there's a deliverance from the Nancy. No progress on that generator, so gen progress pretty, pretty minimal right now. Now, finding the Kate, that there is the best choice for the spirit. Ace knows it too, taking the body block for the Kate. Because if they get the Ace down and kill him, that will only be four hooks. That will not be enough to secure victory here. Whereas Kate, getting her down off a fresh hook would be huge. They'd be able to down her, camp her, kill her, and secure victory for their team. We'll have to wait and see here as Spirit going to be phase walking once again, this time towards the main building. Sounds like they went for the vault. Spirit going to follow in pursuit. And there's the last generator. They're going to need to get this down. Three survivors injured. Ada, only one able to come in for a body block if they attempt. Nancy hanging around as well. We see the Ada in the far back towards Shaq. Pallet being free drops just in case. But Kate going down. We see the ace nearby as well. And no Noed in play. Last perk, by the way, was uh, Off Goes Weasel, which never saw any value, which is kind of insane to think about. That there, though, is the fourth hook. A fresh across three survivors. One more fresh will secure victory. In fact, I think this might still be victory in favor of Cynic, even with them not getting the fourth fresh because of the second hook on Ace. That should be 11 points in favor. And that there with the three man out will be victory here for Cynic in trial number two. So really well played here by both sides to say the least. And uh, with that being said, uh, congratulations to Cynic walking away victorious here in set number two of round number two of Champs of the Fog season eight.